Hey guys, it's JD. I'm out here with the old Bel Air in the shop today. It's kind of a cold day outside, so uh, doing some things inside. And I just kind of thought about, you know, something that I've been wanting to share uh, is maybe some tips for the for you guys out there that are just building your tool sets and just kind of thinking about down the road. You know, I'd love to have a shop and what you can be doing now before you have the structure, the building around you, uh, what you can start doing to uh, to accumulate the things that you you must have in order to have a great shop you know if i had to go out and build all this again today and build all the and uh, and accumulate the tools and all of the, the the things as you'll see you're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars worth of uh, inventory of parts and screws and bolts and things like that uh, and tools that i've accumulated over the years and it just uh, manifested itself in in a shop um, but it takes a little bit of planning, I think, and if you don't really have the grandfather like I had uh, and the dad that I had uh, to, uh, to give you the tools, you know, either you inherit them from him or, or whatever, uh, then it's hard to build something like that. So I'm gonna give you some tips today on uh, what you can be doing, what you can be doing before you get the building to help to build your shop. Okay, so one of the first things that I would tell you about uh, how to build a good shop is, uh, is, is have a rule. Have a few rules. Uh, your first rule should be never turn down a free tool. Under any circumstance, if somebody wants to give you a tool, take it. A cheap tool is better than no tool at all when you need the tool. So uh, don't be a shop diva. I've, I've had friends over the years that only bought the best tool. They only bought the Milwaukee's and they only built, bought the DeWalt's. Uh, and they would save up their money until uh, they could afford uh, just the best of the best. And I was never that way because I didn't grow up that way. Uh, I've also found that those are the same guys that never get their tools used because they value the tool more than they value what the tool can do for them or, or what the tool does. And a tool is no good if it's not usable. So if you've got a $300 Milwaukee tool that you value so much that you won't get it dirty or you won't put it through the ringer, so to speak, uh, what good does it do for you? Uh, I would say that. Don't be a shop diva and never turn down a free tool. I could take you through my toolbox here and I could show you years upon years of things that people have given me over the years or tools that I never bought, never bought. Um, just tool after tool of things that I use that I didn't have to pay for and because of that I've got a great toolbox not the best not a shop diva but I've got one of everything all right the second thing is you can't have a good shop if you don't have a good toolbox you need to spend some money on a toolbox because unless you can organize your tools where you can get to them when you need them, they're not gonna do you any good. So before you spend a lot of money on these great tools that you're gonna buy, maybe hit mom and dad, maybe hit the grandpa and grandma for our Christmas and birthday presents of toolboxes. So this is where I've, this is my big toolbox now um, I think I've got about $500 in this one. That's it's a, it's a pretty nice toolbox. Got that at Home Depot. But before that one came, you know, the old one that I got. I think I got it at Lowe's years ago. And this one replaced one that I gave away. Um, you just keep kind of getting bigger and bigger as you go. These are not high-end toolboxes. These are very consumer-grade toolboxes. But you have to have toolboxes, uh, and you'll have them full of tools. Hopefully, by the time you're my age. And uh, if you don't have a good toolbox, you're going to have a tough time having a good shop. All right, and while we're talking about toolboxes, you should also think about this. You need both large rolling toolboxes, like the big ones in the shop, but you also need these smaller ones. Uh, the handheld toolboxes because there's going to be a lot of times when you're going to want to just grab specifically for a, a, a one job. Um, this toolbox I've got set up for any time that I do electronics in my car especially. So this is for, for 12 volt electronic stuff, uh, not in the house, uh, not the 110 stuff, not the 220 stuff, but this is all about 
uh, automotive electronics and I've got it set up so that I've got all of my fasteners, all of my connectors, I've got wires, I've got testers, I've got tape, I've got extra lamps, I've got all kinds of things, uh, connectors in my one toolbox that I can grab anytime that I know that I'm gonna be either putting in a car stereo or I'm gonna be wiring brake lights or anything like that, that's my one toolbox. So I've got the same kind of setup for the residential electronics that I do. So if I'm putting in an outlet or wiring a three-way switch or something like that in the house, then I've got another box that I can go grab that's got outlets and it's got strippers and it's got uh, different kinds of wire nuts in those. Uh, I've got that set up, so it's kind of job specific. You may not be able to do that up front, but as you get more and more into uh, repairs and things like that and a little bit better in your experiences, you'll want to set your toolboxes up so that you can grab them specific to whatever job that you're doing. Uh, so uh, toolboxes are great things to invest in for your shop. All right, so we're back to a rule, a shop rule. Never throw anything away. That's a grandfather rule that I grew up with. My grandfather had uh, little coffee cans full of old screws and bolts and nails. I've seen my grandfather even sit for hours straightening nails uh, that had been used before. And that all comes out of him growing up and living through the Great Depression when uh, and also that they live so far away from civilization in the country that, that you couldn't go to Home Depot and grab something just when you needed it. So never throw anything away is sort of a shop rule. Um, so if you go through my shop and you, and you look at things, so I have got tons and tons and tons of bins of screws that are just, that I can dig through here and I can find one of anything. Um, some guys take the time to organize this better than I do, and um, and I've got some organization in that. So if you kind of take a look down through there, I have these things all set up in these different drawers. These are also great things to build, where you can just you know drag them out. You've got these little just little drawers full of specific things. So when you really got to looking for different parts and things, you know I don't go to Home Depot every day. Uh, but when I go there, I'm always grabbing some things like this and I'm replenishing these drawers so that when I'm at home and I've got little jobs that I've got to get done or I'm working on the cars in the shop, things like that, I've got a bunch of stuff that I can go pull from. Here's another one. You know, if you took this drawer or this little box right here and you inventoried every screw that's in it and you went to Home Depot and you had to buy all of this, there's probably $100 worth of stuff in that one drawer that if you just throw those things away, that's $100 you're gonna to have to go spend at some point, and you'll spend a lot more than that because I don't know if you've ever noticed this at Home Depot, but they always package the screws in quantities you don't need. I don't know how they know that, but it's you always have to buy two packages no matter what. Uh, so never throw anything away is a shop rule. Uh, I can go through here and you can see I don't throw anything away. I've got old cans of paint, things like that. That stuff will go bad at some point, and you will have to throw it out if it goes bad, so I don't say never, but. You know, old pieces of steel, things like these brackets. All of these things are things that you should never throw away because as soon as you throw that away, and that's $1.99 probably at Home Depot, um, if you throw one away, you're going to have to replace it one day. And every time I break my rule of never throw anything away, within just a few weeks, I need whatever that was that I threw away. It's crazy. So I've got plumbing stuff, all kinds of things that I've got in storage uh, in my shop, even up here. I've got tons and tons of plumbing stuff, uh, household repair things, just anything. I don't throw it away. I buy shelves and I keep it. Uh, all these drawers, they're just full of things. I've got different, almost like different departments in all of the shop that I go to and I know where things are going to be. Never throw anything away. Big rule in the shop. Okay, here's another rule in the shop. Uh, keep your tools clean and don't leave them laying outside. Keep them oiled and ready to use. There's a lot of guys that are a, a lot better at this than I am um, about maintenance on your tools, but tools will last a long time if you buy a quality tool and you take care of it. You know, take care of your tools and keep them clean. They're not covered with grease. And they're not covered with, you know, uh, mud and grease and gunk and stuff. Keep your tools clean and take care of them, and they'll last you a long time. Be 
So you need to continue to invest in these little pins. I tell you what, when you buy bins, if you buy them clear, you can see what's in them before you have to open them. That's pretty important. Uh, very good to buy some clear stuff. That stuff's cheap. You'll need to invest in some things that you won't think are shop tools. And some of those things would be like PVC pipe. If you're renovating a car, you're gonna end up with a lot of pieces of trim. You're gonna end up with some pieces that are not gonna be something that you can hang. And these large pieces of PVC pipe are great for storing items like that. You're gonna to need to invest in shelving, a lot of shelving. Anytime somebody's got a shelving unit that they're throwing away, you need to go pick it up. This stuff is, this is one man's trash is another man's treasure. But if I didn't have these shelving units, and I've got, I'd have got probably 10 more of these in store and they were given to me. Uh, that's crazy, I know. Uh, but honestly, uh, get as many shelves as you can. Buy hooks and buy things that you can get things hung on the walls. All of this stuff is hung up on the walls with hooks or with uh, shelving brackets, things like that. You need that in your shop because you've got to get this stuff out of your way. And you also, the more you use things hung up like this, the better you can see them. Uh, so if you can see it and it's not in a drawer somewhere, you know where it is and it's not that hard to find. Hey, here's a rule for your shop. A buddy of mine, Leonard, has a great upholstery shop down in Columbia, Tennessee. And uh, Leonard used to make fun of me because my shop used to be always dirty. Uh, he would always, he would see my shop floor and he would think, God, I don't know how you get anything done in there. And I have gotten in a better habit now of keeping my shop clean. Uh, clean is a sort of a relative term in a shop. Uh, but if you don't keep your shop clean, uh, you can't get much done and when you do things in your shop everything that you work on is going to be dirty So keep your shop clean but all the old-timers used to always say keep your shop clean keep your shop clean there 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 There's a reason for that and I actually figured this out the hard way I was working on this car and I was doing the uh, exhaust system and I had exhaust pipe laying in the floor out here and I took a weird step and I stepped on a piece of exhaust pipe and it rolled out from underneath my foot and I fell hard into the floor because my shop was so cluttered up. And I realized then, you know, you need to keep your shop clean. So keeping your shop clean is important. Always having, you need to have probably more than one trash can, but you always need a trash can on hand and you need room in the bag. If your tra trash can is full, get your trash taken out so that you can keep your shop floor clean. All right, I got another rule for the shop. So this is where I keep all of my automotive paint supply stuff. So that's my paint guns. Uh, I've also got a drawer that I keep uh, airbrush and things like that in. And I've got spray paints, tons and tons of spray paints. And I painted this car here and I painted it partly here in the shop, which brings me to my shop rule. Never paint inside your shop. Now this is a rule you're gonna break. But every time you paint inside your shop, everything in your shop gets a layer of this paint residue on it. And if you paint in your shop a lot, you're gonna get a lot of paint residue. So you need to not paint in your shop. If, you're got, if you've got a job that you wanna do where you're gonna do a little bit of spray painting, get outside of your shop. You need to, you're supposed to do it in a well-ventilated area anyway, but get outside of your shop and you know, get some string or some chain and hang it on a tree and paint it outside. Uh, if you get bugs in it, let the paint dry and you can sand them out, it's not a big deal. But don't paint inside your shop unless you absolutely have to. But that should be a shop rule. Well, I've got a great shop rule for you. Always work on a work surface that's flexible and, and will roll. So I use the, the simplest setup in the world. I like to have, this is an old laundry basket, rolling laundry basket with a metal frame and I put a two foot by four foot board over the top of that. And that makes a great work surface for me uh, to use uh, just to do anything that I want. And the great thing is I can drag it to anywhere in my shop and I can get it out of the way and I can put it in a different place 
And if you've got a rolling work surface in your shop of any kind that you can work off of, it will make your shop so much more usable and more flexible. And anything in your shop, in fact, anything that you've got that is on wheel so that your workspace can be, can be flexible, that's just a benefit to you. So try to keep things as mobile and as flexible as you possibly can while you're in your shop and work on a table that's not fixed to the ground where it is and uh, you'll have a lot more space. Okay, so here's a shop rule not everybody can do. But if you can in any way get a sink in your shop with a water supply, that makes life so much better. So when I installed the sink out here, I mean, I used to have to walk into the house and it's a pretty good walk to wash my hands. Uh, I would keep, actually, I would keep buckets of water uh, outside the shop so I could go out there and just kind of dunk my hands in it. But the greatest thing I've put in my shop has been this sink. I think a shop rule ought to be every shop should have a utility sink. You know, nasty, gross utility sink. Don't ever let your wife come out here and see it. Uh, you gotta have tons of rags, 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 and shop towels. And you need some storage with some more cleaning and some shop towels and hand cleaners. Those are things you've got to have in your shop um, because you get gross out here and you just need, you need to be clean as best you can. Okay, so in my shop, you might've noticed that I have two microwaves. I don't really have two microwaves, I have one microwave. I like to have one microwave in the shop because it lets me heat my coffee up. I'm not gonna make this a shop rule, but the reason I'm talking about this is because the other microwave violates a shop rule. And I have a rule that nothing gets stored in my shop that doesn't belong in my shop. And that guy right there violates my rule. So the reason I have that rule is because when we first bought this place, my wife looked at this shop as 25 feet by 30 feet of storage. That is a no-no. If you have things stored in your shop that don't belong in your shop, you can't use your shop to do things you wanna do in your shop because you're always working around boxes and junk. So rule for the shop is don't let anybody store anything in your shop that hasn't got to do with things going on in your shop. And that right there violates that rule.